how to go about doing what? With the apply tag? With Explain? Oh, the flight test stuff? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, actually, grad student biology will come in and show everybody how to do that. Pardon? He will come in here. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Good afternoon. So we've been talking about the steady state equations of motion. And then last time we specialized them to uh, rectilinear flight, which is cruise. So we're going to continue on with that. This is a steady state level turn, which means that in the Earth fixed axis system, which is x prime, y prime, z prime, or x1, y1, z1, the airplane is doing this kind of thing. It's flying. and rotating about just this z-axis in the earth fixed axis system, right? Airplane doing a turn is going around some center of curvature. And so the only motion we have, we can describe it in terms of a psi rate, a psi dot about that axis, because psi is about that earth fixed axis to start out with. So in the Euler rates, it's easy to explain or represent. We just set theta one dot and phi one dot to zero. And that makes total sense, right? The airplane's banked, but there's no change in bank angle. So phi, the bank angle, the bank uh, rate is gonna be zero. And it's, it's not pitching in that theta dimension. It's only going around in a circle in the Euler rates. So to get in the body fixed rates, we have to use the kinematic equations to figure out what P, Q, and R become. So these are the full kinematic equations. And again, remember the one subscript is telling us we're doing steady state. So this is the kinematic equations for any situation, but for this turn, we knock out phi dot and theta dot, and all we're left with are these side terms. And so then in the steady state equations, we would substitute P, Q, and R into the equations. So let me grab the steady state equations.
as soon as I find them. Oh, I thought I had them Xeroxed. I don't. So these are this. Oh, here we are. So let me share this screen. So these are the steady state equations. And so everywhere you see R1, you substitute what's on the board. Everywhere you see Q1, you plug in that in terms of psi dot and so on. So now those body fixed rates become in totally in terms of the turn rate psi one dot. And that gives you those steady state equations of motion. Specialized for a steady state turn. Now, when we did rectilinear flight earlier, remember we set R, P, and Q to zero because we said there are no rates. And that gave us another set of equations that specialized for the cruise or steady state straight line flight. So we'll use both of those. And in fact, we'll do another set that's for a steady state pull up as well. And for a pull up, all we have is pitch rate. So that will be another special condition and so we have to figure out what P, Q, and R become for a steady state pull up. So any questions about the level turn so far? Again, this is all steady state. So all we're doing is saying, okay, here's the general steady state equations. Now let's some special cases we're gonna look at. Okay, so now we're gonna pull up. So pull up is a circular motion, but in the earth fixed axis system, it looks like this. So here's the center of curvature. And the airplane has, oh, well, that's a horrible airplane, there we go, is rotating with only a pitch rate theta. It's not banking, it's not yawing in those Euler rates. So all we have is theta. So theta is non-zero, but psi dot, sorry, theta dot, psi dot and phi dot are zero. There's no bank rate. There's no turn, no yaw rate. So all we have is theta one dot. So then we go to the kinematic equations here. We're gonna to to take away what we did before. You guys can copy this down again. I'll give you a minute. But now we're gonna knock out, I guess I could leave these here, but let's start from scratch. We're gonna knock out phi dot, but not theta dot. And we're gonna knock out psi dot. So that reduces it a lot, right? All of these terms go away. That's gone, so P is zero. And Q is theta dot times cosine phi. And if we limit this to wings level pull up, that is the wings, you, know, you typically don't do a pull up with your wings banked, otherwise you're doing a pull up and a turn at the same time, right? It gets more complicated. So if we limit it to a wings level pull up, then we also add that phi is zero. So cosine phi becomes one. So that's just theta dot. So Q is just theta dot. That's really easy. All we have is Q1. And how about down here? Here's theta dot, now that's not zero, but if we're wings level, the sine is zero. This is knocked out. So the yaw rate, body fixed axis or yaw rate is zero. So this is really easy, all we have is Q. So again, in those equations that we were looking at, just full-blown steady-state equations. Everywhere you see Q, you leave it alone, or you can put theta one dot. 
R goes away, R goes away, P goes away, P goes away. So these equations simplify quite a bit. And you get another set of equations. I think I have a copy of these. So there's rectilinear flight we did last time. And then here are the equations for the symmetrical pull-up. And notice they're a lot more simple. They're simplified. So a steady state pull-up is going to be easier than just any generic steady state condition. All right, so those three sets of steady state equations we'll be using a lot. When we analyze trim, we're going to trim in the cruise, we're going to trim in a pull-up, we're going to trim in a, a turn, and then we'll also trim with the one engine in operative condition, where we have a twin engine aircraft and we're trimming with one of those not working. All right, so those equations in chapter one we're going to use all the time. So, so far we have, am I still screen sharing? Yep. So, so far what we have in chapter one are the full six degree of freedom nonlinear equations. And if you add on the three kinematic equations, then you have nine equations. And we can only integrate these numerically. And that's valuable if we do a flight simulator. We can do that with well, a computer. And now we have the six steady state equations. And then we did some special cases where we had cruise, pull up, and a turn. And so the steady state stuff is really, this is almost static analysis, right? Because the, the rates, the accelerations are zero, so this is statics, essentially. And so the last thing we want to do is dynamics. Which means if we're in steady state cruise initially, and a gust comes along or the pilot takes the stick and moves it, then what are the dynamics of the airplane on top of that steady state condition? And to do that, we can linearize the equations and say we're in the cruise and then we have small perturbations on top of that, linearize the equations and then we can Laplace them and analyze the dynamics. So what we're gonna have is a small perturbation equations. So that's next. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We've done this in 514. We're going to review it. I'm going to show you my four steps to success in doing this because your next homework problem, which is on Blackboard, uh, it, you're doing this. And that's been posted. It's due a week and a half from today. So it's due on Tuesday, September 8th. Good. Um, and that's because we're going to have to do some lectures before we get there. And then next Thursday, my student, Balaji, the guy that does flight testing at Bombardier, next Thursday, he's going to come in here and show you how to start the first flight test assignment. 
And these slide test assignments are more fun than they are work, although they take some time. Uh, but it's not hugely stressful as far as calculations and analytics. The difficulty is just learning how to fly the airplane and collect the data. And don't stress it, do your best, collect the data. You won't be graded so much on how well you fly the airplane as to whether you went through the process to collect the data and do the steps. All right, so that's a preview of things to come. So we're gonna do the small perturbation equations. Um, I wanna ask, how's everybody doing in classes? On a scale of Z one to 10, What's your workload, your work level? Five, six, I know you hate to admit that it's easy, right? But, so we're not maxing you out with all this extra requirements and masks and nobody's at a 10 or 11 or 12. Yeah, cause I don't know about you, but I mean, we've been doing this almost a week and I'm kind of ready for a vacation. But we got the weekend to go through, right? The what? You're a seven? Oh, somebody in Zoom said they're at a seven. I think it's harder to pay attention when you're Zooming. I get into a Zoom meeting. If I were in an in-person meeting, I wouldn't pull out my phone and fiddle with it probably. Certainly wouldn't check my email, but I'm in a Zoom meeting and it's like, oh, I need to check my email on this other computer over here. And, but hopefully, you know, stay focused, stay on top of each of the classes that you're in and you'll be successful just like any time. Um, any other feedback, comments? Can the Zoom people talk? Can you unmute yourself? I guess they can't answer if they can't. Can you hear me? See, so yeah, there is a chat. Hey. See, Linda, you're in the classroom here and you're muted. Are you able to unmute yourself? Or do I have that locked out? You can? Yeah, I see it. Okay, I just want to make sure. What should happen is if you talk and you're on Zoom, even you, if you're in your class, it will be on the speakers overhead here and we should be able to hear you. Hello. All right, nonlinear equations of, mo of motion. So this is still in chapter one. Chapter one spends a lot of time just setting up all the equations that we're gonna use and then we're just gonna grab them and use them. All right, so we start with that full set of nonlinear equations. Somebody's saying I might need to set my output device for it to work on the overhead speakers, but I thought we got them to come through the other day. Let me check. Somebody on Zoom say something right now. Can you hear me? We're not hearing anything, are we? I don't want to do that. I know we tried this in another class. All right, well, let's go on. If you guys have questions, you guys that are on Zoom, if you see a question pop up in chat, give me a heads up so I'll, I can address it. Oh, the equations. 
Can you hear me now? All right, so these are the full six degree of freedom nonlinear equations. Remember, they're nonlinear because of V times R, W times Q, all these products, the sines and cosines make them nonlinear. And so in these equations, we're going to substitute some small perturbation variables. And so for each motion variable, We're going to write it as the sum of a steady state plus a small perturbation on that steady state. So that's a gust. Cruising along, we get a small alpha gust, for example. So U is going to be replaced by U1 plus little u. And that's why we put these one subscripts on steady state is because when you're writing on a piece of paper or a board, it's hard to tell the difference between a capital U and a lower U. So everywhere we say V, we're going to do this. And so on. And then we're going to do the same thing for psi, theta, and phi. So psi is going to be psi 1 plus little psi, theta, and phi. Ran out of room, so maybe I'll try to write those over here. We're going to have like that. And the same thing for the forces and moments. For example, FAX will be composed of a steady state force and then a small perturbation. So continuing on up on the top here. And the same for y and z, so we'll just ditto that for y and z. And then the moments. Aerodynamic rolling moment's going to be a steady state part plus a small perturbation part. Same thing for L, M, and N. Those are all aerodynamics as well as the thrust. So everywhere we see a variable in those full nonlinear equations, we're going to substitute these sums. And then we're going to say this stuff is all small. So small products will be neglected. For example, if we see P times u, we're going to neglect it. We're not going to say it's zero, we're just going to say it's small. All right, so the first equation we're going to do, we're going to do the x-force equation. So I'm going to grab this equation, and where we see u, we're going to put u1 plus u. Where we see v, we're going to put v1 plus v. So that's step one is substitute.
And again, these are Dr. Steck's four steps to success, which means in the homework, if you show me all four steps and make it obvious that you did it, you'll get credit. So step one. Substitute. So let's do it. This is the X force equation. So it's M and where we saw U, we plug in U1 plus U. Where we saw V, V1 plus V. R1 plus R. You get the idea. No, oh, we got the sine of theta. So what are we going to do with sines and cosines? So maybe we need to work those ahead of time because it takes a little bit of work and we can do that. So if we say have sine of a big number plus a little number, that's a double angle formula. So we can write that as sine cosine plus cosine sine, right? Look that formula up on Google. We used to have to look it up in a book. Now we just ask Siri. Although I don't know if Siri will answer this. Siri, what's the double angle formula for sine? Somebody try it. Okay, and then if we have a cosine, there's another formula for that. Did somebody try it? Oh, okay. You guys have these memorized by any chance? I think at one time I did, sort of. And then we're going to say, okay, little theta is small, so what can we do with that to help? Because these are nonlinear terms. Well, theta 1 is not small, so we can't really do anything with that, but cosine, we can say that's 1. And then here we got sine of theta. And we can say that's zero, but maybe we don't need to go to that extreme. Let's keep as much information as we can. We could say that this is just theta, and that makes it linear in theta now, so we're good there. Here, cosine is one, and sine, did I get that right? Yeah. So we can use that. So down here we got mg sine. So we're going to use this formula up here. Now I find it better to write the, the perturbed variable first so it doesn't look like you have cosine of theta 1 times theta. And then what's left in this is the forces and moments. So we're just going to write that as a steady state part and a non-steady state part. And we have both aerodynamic and thrust. We're going to write both of those. So that was step one. Step two is easy. The derivative of a steady state value is, is zero. So that's step two.
And I want you to do that step. When you substitute in, I want you to write u1 dot, even though it's real obvious it's zero, write it in there and then knock it out. So that's step two. Step three is to multiply and neglect small products. So that means, oh, this is a pain, right? We've got to multiply this thing out. We've got to multiply this thing out, but let's do that. So I'm going to have M. We knocked out U1 because it's zero. So I'm going to get V1 times R1 minus V1 R minus little v big R minus little v little r. So I did this. Now I've got w1 q1 plus w1 little q plus little w big q plus little w little q. So I did that one. And let's see, that's all we need to multiply out. Let's write this thing out in two terms here. Okay, so that's step three. We multiplied, so I guess that's 3a that we just did. And now it says neglect small products. So here we got big times big. Can't do anything with that. Here we got big times small. Small times big, small times small. So we're going to say neglect, or we're going to say this is small. When you do this, do not say that that is zero, because that's not true. It's just that we're going to say that 0.1 times 0.1 gives us a smaller number than 0.1 times 100. And so if you plug in numbers, you'll actually see that those numbers will be a lot smaller, and so we can throw them away. So and then we're going to say W times Q, small times small. That small product. And that's all we really need to do. So you can see it was good that we kept this theta here because it doesn't multiply anything else small, so we might as well keep it, and it's still linear. Each term only has one small perturbation dynamic variable in it. And we're going to Laplace this. We know how to Laplace u dot of t. These are just numbers. D1 is a number, that's the side velocity, maybe it's 10, and then R is a function of time, so we can Laplace that. All right, so that's three steps. There's one more left. So to do that, I want to look at this term here, because that's all steady state. There's no small perturbation variable in that. All right, there's no little r, no little u, no little v, it's all big. And same deal for this one. And in fact, for this one as well, right? That's all steady state. This one has theta in it, so it's not. But these terms here are all steady state. So can we do anything with those? It seems like those aren't going to help us out. Those are all steady state terms. Let's go back and look at the steady state equations. Hang on a second, I need to find the right page here.
Okay, I found the question. What was your question? Because steady state says that u1 is zero. Remember, steady state is u1 dot u v1 dot r1 p1 dot q1 dot r1 dot all of the accelerations are zero. So that's just because u1 is a steady state term. It's like five. So the derivative of that, I guess it's more like 150 knots, uh, derivative of 150 is zero because it's just a constant. Everybody hear that? Good on that. Okay, so now I'm gonna screen share the steady state equations. So look at the top equation there. Ignore all the red stuff that we did last time. How does that compare to the underlying terms that I have on the board? <clears throat> Same equation, right? So if we subtract this equation, which is going to be the steady state equation holds, you can subtract that equation, which means you subtract out all those steady state terms. Or if you don't like subtracting it, you can say, I'm going to substitute the left side of this equation in for those terms here, and then I can cancel across the equal sign. Either way, it's the same thing. So step four, I call subtract the steady state equation. And so that means we can erase those terms. It doesn't mean they're zero. Don't, in your homework, say zero because it's steady state, because that's not true for sure. So don't say it's zero, just erase it. Actually, write, subtract steady state equation, write the steady state equation, and then write the new equation with it subtracted out. So that will show me step four. So you'll be writing this equation after you say subtract steady state and show me the equation. All right, so then we're left with this, which is the small perturbation X force equation. And this is on page 30, so these equations are on page 30 of your book. Yep, so this set of equations, 1.75 ABC, and then here's the moment equations. And then here's the kinematic equations down here. All right, so I just did this one. On the homework, you're doing Yeah, where's my sheet? Oh, right here. You are doing the B, yeah, the second one, 175B. So you're going to do that one. So I'll finish writing here. And you're also going to do the 
this one here. And next, I'm going to do this one so that we've done it twice. So I'm going to do that equation. And then the kinematic equations, it's the same story. You just end up with the kinematic equations. Here you do the same kind of approximations. You've got lots of sines and cosines that you have to do. But they all work as well. So questions about the four steps because we're going to do it again. And then you're going to do it on homework problems number one and two. Again, when you do the homework, explicitly write down each of the four steps. Show me your work. Show me that you did it. And make it obvious that you did it so that it's easy for me to grade. All right, so this should go quicker. We're going to do the moment equation. This is the rolling moment equation. I don't think we need any of the sines and cosine stuff for that because those these show up in the kinematic equations as well as in the gravity terms in the force equations. Somebody say, I need to stop sharing my screen. Do you find that having these masks on make you not want to talk or more hesitant to talk? I'm not dissing you. I find that. You're sitting in a meeting or with people and you have a mask on, you kind of don't want to talk. Maybe it's just because it's hard. Okay, the rolling moment equation. So we're going to substitute. So this is step one. All right, so that's step one. Step two, derivatives of steady state variables are zero. So that's step two. Step three is multiply and neglect. So we've got oh, there's a dot here. And then we got to multiply this stuff out.
Okay, so I got that one. I got to do this one. So we're going to neglect, so we're going to neglect that, say it's small. So that's gone. And then step four is subtract the steady state equation. So this is a steady state term. This is a steady state term. This is a steady state term. And if you look at the steady state equations of motion, again, we're not saying this is zero. We're just subtracting that equation because it's true because we start in, out in that steady state. So then those are gone. And we end up with the roll, small, perturbation equation, which is I six P dot I X Z R dot minus I X Z times P one Q Q one P plus I C Z minus I Y Y R1Q plus Q1R is equal to little la and little lt. And again, you look at this, and there's no nonlinear terms. This is Q1, my bad. So all you have is R and Q, so those are linear in terms of the dynamic variables, P and Q, P dot and R dot. So they're ordinary differential equations, they're linear, we can Laplace. Chapter five. So that's a long way down the road. And I'm sure you've noticed, I've noticed on the screen that the more I write on the board, the better it focuses. And that's because I think it's reflecting off of the ceiling onto the board, and it tends to focus sometimes on that till I start writing. If anybody knows an easy way to tell it how I want to, like if I can manually focus it, let me know. I think in the camera controls, just the generic windows, there's no autofocus uh, for the camera. I mean, autofocus is, is default. So again, what we end up with are these small perturbation equations of motion, including the kinematic equations down here. And this is the one we just did, the P dot R dot equation. Now this small perturbation equation is good for any flight condition. But typically we're gonna say, all right, our steady state flight that we're gonna start out with before we have the perturbations happen is gonna be a cruise condition. 
And that makes these equations a lot easier because remember the cruise condition has no rates. So P1, Q1, and R1 are all zero. And if you look at this, that's gonna knock out a lot more terms. So most of the analysis and the stuff we do in this class is gonna be done just relative to a cruise condition and then a gust happens. So let me write that on the board. So for the cruise steady state condition, we'll have Q1, P1, R1 equal to zero. And in fact, we'll start out with a wings level condition as well. And no side slip. So V1 is gonna be zero. Am I forgetting something? V1 is zero, P1 is zero, I got that, right? On the board, did I write that? V1, zero, V1, P1, Q1, and R1 are zero. Yeah, so that gives a new set of equations. It's the last set of equations in chapter one in your book, and it's for the Cruz small perturbation equations of motion. And that's on page 32, so this, that's this set of equations here. Notice we've knocked out V1, so all we have is W1 and U1, and there are no P, Q, or an R steady state terms. The small perturbation terms are still here because even though you're in initial cruise condition, you could have a roll rate due to a gust or a yaw rate due to a gust, and that's the small perturbation on top of it. All right, so that's the end of chapter one. And so we're gonna to jump to chapter three because chapter two is just a real quick review of aerodynamics and we've done that in uh, aero, you've done it in aero and we did it in 514. It just talks about airfoils and wings, which we already know how to do. So we're gonna to go to chapter three because we need to fill in in the steady state equations the forces and moments now. So we're gonna be talking about how do we calculate essentially lift, drag, pitching moment, rolling moment, yawing moment that we can substitute in here so then we can trim the airplane. So that's chapter three and I think we'll call it good for today and we'll start on that next time. Any questions from the audience here or from the Zoom group? Somebody says, shouldn't the first little r have a dot? I wonder, sorry, when did that come in? Oh, that was before I forgot to put the dot on this r here. Yeah, okay. Last chance for questions. All right, see you guys next Tuesday.